What's up guys, Pravat here. Greetings of the year and I hope you guys are having an amazing time. I'm here with a list of 20 Android apps which I think is great to start 2017 with. If you think your favorite app is not listed in this episode, make sure to comment it down below. Now without any further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start off with Snapseed. Out of all the photo editing apps, Snapseed has been my favorite. With regular updates, this app has even become better. Not only the basics, we also get all the pro tools that is required to edit the pictures like HDR, healing, white balance, lens blur and many many more. Additionally, you do get various effects and filters for fancy editing. This app even supports raw images which is great for professionals. Packed with all this, we even get a really intuitive UI. With the recent update, we can add fancy text to our images which I often use to make thumbnails for my videos. In a nutshell, it's a perfect photo editing app. While talking about photo editor, now let's talk about video editing. My choice of video editor is KineMaster. Probably the best app for editing videos right on your phone. You get a desktop class editor meaning all the tools and features you need, trimming, adding audio, transition effect, frame speed and duration etc. Additionally, you can apply themes and filters as well. Once that's done, you can export the video. Next up is Brave Browser. The reason why this is on the list is, it's an ad-free browser meaning you don't have to deal with annoying pop-ups, you don't have to install any other extension or worry about any subscriptions as well. It's a really fast browser and comes in very handy while on data plan or roaming. Also it uses your Google account for all the bookmarks, history and other sync settings. Talking about browser, you might need VPN for various stuff and my choice is Opera VPN. The best thing is it's free and easy to use. I personally use it to access geo-restricted contents whether it's a YouTube video, apps or websites. Next up is Swiftly Switch. This app brings a shortcut for all your recent apps, favorite apps, actions, contacts and other shortcuts. I personally use it for multitasking, app switching and accessing the notification while using different applications. You can customize this edge as per your preference and also add another edge to your home screen for added functionality. So next up we have all-in-one toolbox. As the name implies, it has all the tools to manage your memory, clear your junk files, cache, boost your CPU and more. Additionally, you do get other tools like backup and restore, file manager, app to SD that is moving your apps to SD card, etc. This app also comes with a bunch of different widgets to perform different tasks with a single tap. Next up is Clipboard Accents. With this app, all the items that you copy are saved at a single place. Plus, you get various tools for all the copied items. This app comes in really handy while reading articles. What I do is, I copy all the important stuff and then access it later. One cool feature is it auto detects the phone numbers, dates and recommends accents accordingly. Next up we have Gboard. If you are on stock Android, you have this by default. It's a keyboard app from Google. It's really easy to use Google search right from your keyboard, especially while you are on a conversation or writing a long document. Additionally, you can customize your keyboard with different themes or images. You do have all the emojis and gifs as well. All in all an awesome keyboard with both features and functionality. While we are on keyboard, there is this app called Textband. What this app does is, you can add shortcuts for your phrases. For example, if I type OMW, it says on my way. Similarly, GTZ for got to go, TTYL for talk to you later and so on. You can give your own shortcuts and phrases which will definitely add convenience while texting. Next up is Wallpapers. We have two different apps for the wallpapers. The first one is Wallpaper Craft. 
This app automatically detects the resolution of your device and brings an amazing collection of wallpapers accordingly. And the second is backdrops. For variations, I come back to this app for amazing wallpapers. It's got some really high-res wallpapers along with wallpaper of the day recommendation. Next up, it's Flyso. This app is perfect for all the social heads out there as it brings different social apps to one place. You have three different tabs, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you are tired of switching between the apps, you can go with this one. Next up is Parallel Space. This app is best for using multiple accounts on WhatsApp, Messenger, Viber, and so on. This app has been a great help when I use different numbers on WhatsApp or Viber, especially while traveling. Or maybe you can use multiple accounts to play games. Also, you can try apps in incognito mode. This will install the app within this app itself and not show up in the app drawer, which is great for trying out new apps. Furthermore, you can also set a password and use your fingerprint to lock this app. Next up is MacroDroid. If you need some kind of automation on your device, you can use this app. You can set your phone to switch off the Wi-Fi when the battery is below a certain percentage, play music when you plug in the earphones and many many more. This app literally have automation for almost every task on your phone. You can also download additional automating templates if you are bored of creating one and submit your macros online as well. Next up is Hexlock. This app is perfect for locking apps and the best part is it supports fingerprint. Also, you can create profiles to lock the apps. Say I'm on my home profile and my social apps are locked. I switch to work, now none of them are locked. So it's definitely very handy. And you also get a private media vault to store your private photos and videos. Next up is Fingerprint Gesture. As the name implies, you can perform various actions with the fingerprint sensor, like accessing recent apps, notification panel, media play pause, and many many more. Some of the actions may require root access. I use this app to control my media player or check my notifications. You also can set different profiles and set it to access only with registered fingerprints. Next up is Navbar. This is another cool app that helps you to customize the navigation bar. You can set it to change the color according to the app that you are using, or other static color, battery percentage, images, etc. I'm still waiting for the music widget. Next up is Captune. This is the official app from Sennheiser. Being an audiophile, it's amongst my favorite music player. Basically, this app is all about equalizers. And if you are using Sennheiser earphone, you can select it from here for better results. Like I mentioned, you can set the equalizer according to your preference, which is my favorite feature of this app. You can also perform a sound check before saving your settings. Next up, it's ScanBot. This is one of the best app to scan your documents from your phone. It almost works like a real life scanner and comes with some great tools as well. Simply point your phone to the document you want to scan and it automatically detects the document's type, page size and the texts on it. The coolest feature is you can also copy the recognized text from the document which works pretty accurate if scanned properly. Next up is Dingless. You can use this app to smoothen your notifications, meaning it switches the phone to silent mode when the display is on. As you are using your phone, you don't need to be alerted for notifications every time. It makes it super easy for notifications and also you won't be irritated from multiple chats. Lastly, I will be talking about my favorite launcher. No matter what, I always keep getting back to the Nova launcher. It's fast and snappy as you all know that. It has got insane level of customizations from grid size, icon packs, multiple docks and whatnot. The recent update has added the long press functionality as well, which I'm loving. And personally, I use the landscape mode while casting my phone to my TV. 
This launcher is a complete package of features, functionality and customization. So that was it for this video guys. I hope you found it useful. If you have any recommendations, feel free to comment it down below. Stay tuned for more and I will catch you guys in the next one.